Vahçuyun imşat sırıl her uzda titah barekam ner, skisunenk meray sor bra zagire, ay sor çem xoselu arku vajarkiz, al xoselu yem unem hür, var petke xosen xosen ki rava banakan harcerit, ki rava banunem hüre, ay tis paçarov hagortum piti anskats nem anglerenov, yev uzumem arans jamnak korsnelo. Hera uşadıcının nerkasına mim hürin. Welcome Shahab to Cashflow Real Estate TV Show. You are a criminal and defense lawyer. We're going to talk about. Please introduce about yourself and welcome to Cashflow Properties. Thank you. As Gagik said, my name is Shahab Tarani. I'm a criminal defense lawyer. And I've been practicing law for 10 years now. Um, and I'm in the field of criminal defense and traffic law. Uh, Shahab, uh, is, I think you've been in business and you're also well known in Armenian community. Uh, yeah. You also help many Armenians. Yes. Would you please talk about that a little bit? Absolutely. <coughs> um, about eight years ago, I got introduced to the Armenian community, um, and I definitely saw an interplay between the cultures, uh, the way that people like to be treated, the way they like to be uh, reassured that their problems will be resolved, uh, and just the companionship because of obviously the cultures go back hundreds of years. So. Um, fortunately, now my book of business has definitely expanded to the Armenian community, and um, I am very happy to help them uh, because it almost feels like I'm helping one of my own. As a matter of fact, um, I worked with you for many years, and you help my family too. And I am uh, very happy uh, that I have chance today to introduce you guys, so you can use. Shahab services. Thank you. My pleasure. So, uh, what are the areas you uh, specialize uh, in uh, in this industry? Sure. So, as I said, <coughs> uh, I specialize in criminal defense and traffic law. So, if someone gets a DUI, you know, some type of felony, uh, anything that the repercussion could be jail time, they'll reach out to me. Also, on the flip side. I handle traffic matters, and people are like, well, why would you need a lawyer for traffic? Well, everyone needs to drive, and they need a valid license, and in order to do that, if they get involved in a traffic matter, I make sure that their license is in good standing such that they can drive, pick up the kids, go to work, um, and you know they don't have to worry about whether their license is in jeopardy. So those are the two areas that I specialize in. And why did you... Uh choose to practice law? <clears throat> I could tell, my parents could tell at a young age that talking and speaking was something that I like. You know, interacting with people um, is something that's very deep to me. Uh, and then as I got older, I could tell that I like helping people. You know, the satisfaction of seeing someone that's down being picked up was the main thrust for me to go into to law. And the whole idea of two competing sides going at each other. Um, I've always liked the competition. In, in law, there's always a competing force, you know, whether it's me against a prosecutor or in traffic against the officer. I like that. So those are the things that really um, got me into it, the whole competitive element. I just want to um, um, give uh, the, uh, the telephone number for Shahab. Go ahead. In case um, you know my viewers want to get hold of Shahab, you can reach him at 310 area code 869-4294. And uh, like I mentioned, he's, uh, he's doing a traffic and criminal law. Yes. Okay. Uh, I was always wanted to ask you this question. Uh, what is the biggest case you have done? Well, <clears throat> someone's come to me for uh, being charged with murder. So. And the experience in, uh, you know, this yeah, factor, yeah, I would really would like 
Absolutely. <clears throat> well, when someone's being charged with murder, obviously there are thoughts of you're never going to see daylight again. Um, and that challenge really came to me as a point of, well, it could go one or two ways for this person. They could either be in custody for the rest of their life, or I could show some type of doubt or, uh, to undermine the case. So uh, I think murder for me was a case that in several occasions where I've had to really um, you know, dig deep and find some type of inaccuracy if one exists. Now, I'm not the type of lawyer to make things up. If something happened and it is what it is, you know, I'll tell the client, the family, you know what, I'm going to try to, what we call in the law, mitigate, reduce the harm as much as possible, um, or the punishment. Um, but yeah, I would say murder is, is something, God Geek, that really, um, you know, challenged me and made me realize, wow, you know, this is, everything's on the line for the client. So those are the cases that really... So you get to know the client first, how, how this is works, you know, I mean, just in the yeah. process. So <clears throat> clients typically on their own or through their family will, will reach out to me. And then I always tell people the relationship between client and lawyer is much like a doctor. There's got to be trust. And if there isn't that inner trust, I say, you know what? You're not offending me if you go somewhere else because I want the client to feel like their best interest is in my heart. I want their, their family to feel that, that inner you know, trust that I'm taking their interest and putting it at top of my mind. So um, I think, you know, to your point, um, I get to know the client and typically the family because whatever happens to the client is in some way going to affect the family, whether it's their children, their spouse, their girlfriend, whomever. And, and, and if you have more chances of winning or losing the case, how do you approach? Good question. So I always manage expectations. I will tell clients outright, look, no lawyer <clears throat> is a guarantor of success. What that means is we are ethically bound to tell the client we can't, ex you know, 100% guarantee that your case will get dismissed. But I'll give you likelihoods of success. Practically, what can I do with your situation and make it a quote win? And that's what I do with my clients. I always manage expectations. I shoot straight with them and I let them know on past situations that I've dealt with, this is the possible outcome. And I believe that's why getting back to the Armenian community, they want to be told straight answers. They don't want to be given high expectations that aren't you know, based upon reality. So that's what I do with my clients. I manage the expectation and make sure that their interests are the top of my mind. Just want to remind my uh, viewers that you can, if you have any questions about Shahab, you can reach at uh, 310 area code 869-4294. Yes. And you can call him and you, if you know, have any questions, please feel free to call and ask all your questions. Uh, do you, um, what courthouses do you uh, specialize more? Uh, in, do you do the, just in California or outside of California? I'm only licensed in California. I practice uh, all the way up from Sacramento down to the border. But if, if you're going to see me in court, you're primarily going to see me in Glendale. You'll see me in Van Nuys, uh, Chatsworth, downtown courthouses. I'll go to Orange County. But the thrust of my business are, are these LA courts? You know, it's it's uh, so many. Uh, it's the the question that um, worries pretty much everybody, and we see tragic accidents every day, especially when somebody use uses the you know cell phone and then drives around. You sure. Know. And um, would you please? Um, talk about and explain uh, what are the uh, punishments and yeah let's talk about this because this is affects pretty much everybody Abs you know? absolutely so uh, the law has changed with respect to cell phone violations uh, about three five you know, three or four years ago 
One had to be physically texting on the phone or manipulating the phone in some way. Now the law has changed to where if you're merely holding the phone, that's considered a violation. And I understand why. Because people's attention is completely distracted and then you get those fatal accidents. The mom walking their child, you know, um, husband and wife walking down the street and they're barreled into. So there's correlation between, you know, being on the phone and, you know, fatal um, situations that happen. So people need to be, everyone needs to be mindful about these cell phones. Although we're all wedded to them and we need them in, in some you know, way to see when we need to pick up our child or something for work. But if you're driving and you hold the phone and you see an officer, more than likely you're going to get pulled over. And me as a defense lawyer, I understand that because it, the safety of, of our community is at stake. So I really want everyone to remind themselves that text or phone call can wait. Yeah, it can wait. Sincerely, it can wait. You know, um, three to five seconds of distraction or even a second of distraction can lend itself to death or something that you will for the rest of your life pay for. So I just shed light on how the law has changed. Let's all be mindful. We all, you know, want to be safe in our community. And one way that we can be safe is put the darn phone down. Absolutely. Leave it down. And then once you're stopped safely, then you can return that text. Absolutely, because matter of seconds, yep. accidents can happen. Oh, yeah. So put that away, especially when you're driving, and uh, let's avoid all these accidents. And you know, definitely. Um, thank you very much for explaining this. You know, because this, uh, you know, many, especially youngsters, without, sure. yeah. without, uh, carelessly, they, they just use the phone when they drive. Yeah, yeah. And that's what caused the accidents, you know, it just, uh, yeah. I just want to uh, remind, uh, want to remind my viewers that you are watching a the cash flow um, the real estate TV show. We're not doing, uh, we're not doing TV show about the real estate today, but we are doing a, a show about uh, traffic and criminal law. And my guest is today Shahab Tehrani. Uh, you can reach uh, at uh, 310-869-4294 anytime if you have any questions. Uh, my next question would be, oh, uh, this is also, we have seen why criminals uh, let out of jail so soon? Yeah, that's another question you know, I get. Seen, yeah, yeah, I get that a lot. Um, it's really a numbers game in that the jail population is overrun, especially in LA County, and government resources are lower. So when you deal with overpopulation and a lack of government resource, that equates to people getting out a lot sooner than they ordinarily would. Um, so that potentially can put the community at risk, and there's a lot of political tension I don't want to get into, but the bottom line of it is you got an overpopulated jail system and the people in the jail, those that work in the jail rather, have to prioritize who they want to keep in, who they want to let out. Uh, so that numbers game, you know, puts people on the street that perhaps in the past they would be, you know, incarcerated. So unfortunately, it's just the numbers game that foreseeably will be that way. And uh, how, how is it going to affect on, uh, on, uh, on us, I mean, generally? Well, like, like I said, it could put the public at risk. You know, you could have people on the street that you don't want to be, you know, around, around your family, around your kids. Um, so that's something that the legislature, the people up in Sacramento, have to decide how they want to mm. tackle that issue. You know, do they want to have uh, more jails? You know, that could perhaps house more, or would rather uh, house more uh, inmates. What about us, our ordinary citizens? What can we do? Our part, what, what can we do? Go to your local legislature <clears throat> and tell them that you're concerned about people that are on the street that shouldn't be on the street. And 
know, ask for more, um, uh, demand more people that can work in the jail, hire more people in jail, get more funding for those that can work in the jail. That, to me, that's the only way out of this, you know, early release. And again, there's some political tensions that I don't want to get into, but the bottom line, it's a numbers game. And it's been like that for several years, and I don't see it changing unless something up in Sacramento uh, enables these jails to house people because they just, uh, sheer man and woman power, they can't. They can't absorb it. I see you're a very passionate about your job. I love it. What makes you to go to law school? Um, I like, it's funny, for some odd reason, I like adversity. I like, I like the dealing with the, you know, the challenge, the uh, David and Goliath mentality, um, st odds stacked against you. So uh, I like that coupled with the interactive. What you see here on camera is the interaction with people. People that have totally competing interests and they have to either get along or they go their other ways and the best argument wins. That tension to me is the encapsulates you know the idea of being a lawyer you know you have to be able to compete or just like in your industry broker a deal you know so those those two tensions really uh really motivated me to become a lawyer if someone uh, wants to be in your industry sure to go to law study law uh, what would you suggest don't do it for the money the money is a byproduct. Yeah. Everyone gets fixated on these prof or this profession rather because, oh, it's going to make me a lot of money. Okay, but do, are you passionate about it, right? Are you passionate about what you're doing? Helping the people. Especially. Helping the people. Absolutely. Ta taking someone that is in a down situation and uplifting them and in turn uplifting their family. That passion is, is what I would tell a person. If they want to help their community, if they want to help people with child custody, with divorce, criminal defense, uh, you know, business disputes, anything that you're passionate about and you feel like you can impact, go be a lawyer. You know, many people ask me, ask me, why do you like real estate? Sure. Okay. Um, I'm, I don't like real estate. I'm obsessed about real estate. <laughs> I love real estate, to be honest with you. Sure. And this is the reason why. Every time I can give them the keys when I close the transaction, you should see the happiest faces. I mean, the, the smiles, the happiest faces on their face when I handed them to the, in the keys at the end of the transaction. Mm -hmm. That joy, that happiness inside me, it just, I cannot describe. Yeah. And uh, also, when I show properties, I open doors, uh, incredible doors, the, the architectural, uh, the design, the difference, you know, all these designs, just, I can't believe what I'm seeing. It's just so amazing, all these different architectural, you know, designs, characters. And this is why I'm obsessed about the real estate. This is why I love helping people. In your case, how would you relate real estate with, uh, with the law? I would say the unknown. You know, someone may know what, what community they want, li want to live in, but they don't know exactly which house they're gonna land in. And I would say the same thing in criminal defense and traffic is someone comes to me and, and doesn't know what the outcome, am I gonna go to jail? Am I gonna lose my license? Will I get points on my record? And the unknown turning it into a gratifying resolution is where I see that you said, you know, giving someone the keys to their property and that f sense of fulfillment that you get it's the same sense of fulfillment rather I get when I see someone who came to me with a bad situation and the case was either dismissed or reduced to something. They're like, wow, I didn't even think that was possible. 
And that unknown turning it into an absolute moment of joy is where I can see the relationship between real estate and criminal and traffic defense. Except yours is takes a little bit longer, right? Oh, Not yeah. Especially the criminal side. Uh, yeah. Is, yeah. What's the longest it, you know, uh, it I, I've, go? Sure. I've mm -hmm. had murder cases go on for years, two years. Wow. Yeah, I mean, because um, investigations have to happen. Um, more evidence needs to be passed over from the prosecutor to me. Um, just like in your industry, deal brokering mm -hmm, needs, to, mm -hmm. needs to go on. And that's not an overnight process. So um, I always remind the client, a good result will take time. If you want to speed through the criminal and traffic process, expect a bad result. Give me time. I always, this is my mantra, trust the process. If you trust the process, you're going to yield a result that you're going to, that you're going to like. Not only they have to trust you oh. as a defense attorney, they Absolutely. have to trust me as their real estate agent. So if there is a, a trust between you and the um, client, Definitely. That, that connection will resolve all the problems. You know, it's interesting. I had a, a prospective client call me and she's... Um, you know, she, she's used my services before, and this, but this was for her father. And I said, I can tell you're having trust issues. Um, and I'm big on that. You know, I always say, look, if you don't trust your doctor, change doctors. That's it. And same, you're not offending me. But if we don't have that binary trust, we cannot go forward because it's, yeah. a, it's a battle. Criminal defense, traffic defense is a battle. Absolutely. And we can't have mutual combat we need to be on the same plane the same mentality so trust is big to me i just want to remind my uh, dear uh, viewers you're watching uh cash flow real estate tv show where i'm doing a program with my friend uh shahab tehrani he's a traffic and criminal defense lawyer and you can call him anytime and ask uh, all your questions at uh, right down at his telephone number 310-869-4294. My friend, we have, uh, I think, two or three minutes to uh, finish our program. Uh, what would you say uh, you're closing to our viewers? Again, um, <clears throat> being connected to the Armenian community, um, feel free to reach out to me. Gagi gave you my contact information. Um, any questions that you may have, uh, no question is bad. And, you know, I'm here to help you. So if you're fearful about something, don't be. I'd be happy to help you out, at least give you an idea, an estimation about what I think could happen or would happen. So being in the know, uh, I want you to know that you have someone in your community that wants to help you, and I'm always here to take phone calls. Uh, and if I don't take your phone call, I'll call you back. That means I'm in court. So I want you to know that you have someone that you can trust, and I want to help, and feel free to call. Um, as you can kind of detect, this is my passion. You know, this is something that I live for on a daily basis. So. Remind them your uh, telephone number, please. Sure, you can reach me at 310-869-4294. And uh, again, if you have any concerns, questions related to criminal or traffic matters, by all means, feel free to reach out to me. I'll be able to help you out or at least give you a, a better understanding of what you're up against. And then you can decide if you want to proceed with me. And as I said, if we don't have that trust, I'll never be offended. But if there's a trust and a connection, more than likely I'll be able to help you out. Uh, like Shahab said, with all your traffic and criminal questions, you can call 310-869-4294. Uh, and for all your real estate needs, you can call me at 818-335-5255. Shahab, thank you very much for coming uh, the, the Cash Flow Properties TV show. Thank you for having me. And hope in the near future we can do another one together. S sounds great. Just want to thank you to my viewers. You watched uh, my program. We'll see you next time.